up and coming pop punk band games we play is fresh and in your face and on your for you page this band just recently dropped their single deadbeat that is truly a banger and after upwards of a million views on tiktok that we only want to hear more from nashville miami all of the place to la we're gonna find out this band is ready to take over the world please welcome games we play hi thank you hey <laughs> hi hello hello um well just to get us started what was the last thing you guys listened to um, we were just listening to Miley Cyrus in the car. Uh, what was yes. that Bruno Mars song we were listening to? Skate. <laughs> oh. Is that the new one? Yes, but we were listening to oh. Gorilla by Bruno Mars. Yeah, that song is you know that song? Bang, bang, Gorilla. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. That's a banger. It's crazy. It yeah, is. It is. Yeah. I feel like people don't appreciate like that era of Bruno Mars as much as they really should. Oh, it's Dude, great. Yeah. What was the last song you listened to? Um, I was listening to Billie Eilish's album. Um, mm. I didn't good? like it the first time, but then I needed to give it some more. It's 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 growing on me. It's growing. Okay, on me. we're getting there. <laughs> oh, hell yeah! Yeah. Um, and I want to talk about what you guys kind of grew up listening to. I mean, I mean, I know I have very much emo pop punk roots, but before that, I was listening to country, which makes you know <laughs> so much sense. Uh, so how did you guys kind of get to where you are, uh, where you listen to at least? Um, so I grew up like listening to pop punk and punk and hardcore. My dad was in um, a hardcore band on Fearless Records called Glass Eater. So yeah. basically, like since I came out of the womb, was listening to edgy bands due to yeah. him. Uh, yeah. Um, I grew up just listening to what my parents would play, which was like Michael Jackson. Prince, all that. Eight. My mom loves '80s music. Um, and then when I like, developed my own music taste, it was a lot of like Nirvana and like a lot of like '90s alt rock grunge stuff. So yeah, that's that's that. A dog. Yeah, I'm probably very similar to you. I have very emo pop punk roots. Um, yeah, we just had a real big emo phase, and I just kind of stuck to that for a while, and then uh, came out the other side better for it. I think. And then now Max and I, I feel like we mostly listen to like rap music and yeah. stuff, which is fun. <laughs> it's weird how that works. Yeah. It's really weird looking at the pipelines of indie kids, because um, I feel like you either go one way. You either go towards the alt-pop way, which is like pretty much where I am, um, and then you go to like the R&B hip-hop way, which is really funny. Um, yeah. Or you just listen to everything and like just hit shuffle on your, your I was going to say iPod, who has an iPod? Your phone, okay. and you're just like, let's fucking go. <laughs> I got a Blake Shelton mixed in the playlist. Oh, dude, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I love, I love country, but only when it's like hard. Like, have you heard the song, uh, He Went to Jared by Hardy? No, but now I need, I need you to immediately to investigate the book this. Is, he went to Jared, I went to the bar. It's so hard. <laughs> honestly yeah yeah see like when i my parents took me to my first concert when i was six i saw tim mcgraw i had i was like the nosebleeds of the seats i had binoculars like the whole thing (laughs) so like we always went to like the summer concert series in my area and stuff like that and it was always like yeah this is this is it and i went to school one day and i was probably like eight and i was wearing a tim mcgraw shirt and somebody goes what the fuck are you wearing not you know <laughs> we're children they probably didn't say fuck but what were you wearing i was like it's yeehaw tim mcgraw and everyone was like what is she doing yeah. um and then i ended up uh finding a fallout boy cd in my older brother's room and mm-hmm. changed my life changed my life in third grade <laughs> what cd oh it was from under a cork tree okay oh, cool yeah. i was yeah, it's like field trip and summer camp and lincoln park came on the radio and that was the catalyst for me really (laughs) you just heard it and you just like your veins kind of just like here we are (laughs) 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 amazing amazing so your kind of origin story starts in miami from my understanding so you guys are in la now which is amazing congratulations on that Thank um, you. How and you guys stopped in Nashville somewhere along the way. Um, yes. How did that kind of happen? Why did you move, choose Nashville? And then why was the LA move kind of essential for you guys? So, I initially moved to Nashville with my parents. 
Um, he grew up in Miami, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, started the start of the Miami. You want story. me to start from the beginning? Yeah. So we That's all. I was born. <laughs> right? Just open the book from the womb. I was listening to hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so we were all in like separate local bands in South Florida. Games you play has been the only band I've been in, but they've all been in a couple bands. Um, and yeah, we saw each other around, and then Aaron joined Games You Play in South Florida, right? And we still saw Max at shows. I used to ask Max to hang out at shows just to get him to come to Games You Play shows and not hang out with him. I heard. <laughs> anyway, so then I moved to Nashville with my family, and coincidentally, Max moved on the same day. So... Ignore it, ignore it, ignore it, ignore it, ignore it, ignore it. <laughs> Sorry. We got to Add him to the call. Wait, let no. me let me throw this boy on do not disturb. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. No, you're sorry. fine. I actually reminded me to do that too. <laughs> cool. Okay. I right, think we are on do not disturb. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh we moved to Nashville and then Max and I became really really good friends and then Aaron moved up to Nashville to be in games you play. And then we just did the band thing for a while. Um, Max was never like an official member of Games You Play, but he would always hang out with us. And then we kind of just stopped doing it because life happened. Um, yeah. Aaron, and then COVID hit. Yeah. And then you guys moved back to Florida. Yeah. And then mid COVID, I was just like, guys, do you want to go to Los Angeles? And well, not mid COVID. It was like and two months end. ago. Yeah. Yeah. No. Near the end of COVID. No, I'm saying for when we. Yeah, this was a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, this was like six months ago, Aaron. I was oh. like, guys, do you want to go to Los Angeles and record a bunch of songs? So we did with our other super close friend, Jake. And basically, we recorded the songs. And it was like a great, great vibe. And we were taking hella photos, making hella content, writing great music. Yeah. And we at that moment, we were just like, do you guys want to move here? Um I don't know. It was just up. It was just a really good time to capitalize. Yeah, and then we literally sent it. Like, we got back to Nashville. We were in Nashville for, like, two weeks. I sold everything I owned. Literally everything. I literally everything. sold every single... I have, like, six t-shirts. Actually, this one's new, so now I have seven. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, like, it was so spur of the moment. Like, I just got a job in Nashville because I thought I was moving back to Nashville, but we all just decided to, like, send it and come here. Yeah, I thought I was moving so. back to Nashville as well. I thought I was moving back to Nashville in August. And then we had like that those two weeks in LA, and I was like, "Guess I'm moving to LA with the boys." <laughs> so that was fun news to break to my girlfriend. Just like the ultimate full send. Yeah, yeah. she loves it in LA though. Yeah, she she came with us. <laughs> she hates it. <laughs> We're vibing. Oh, I love yeah. the support. <laughs> the, the boys' vibes are up though. <laughs> so, so, where in Miami are you guys from? I am from, so if you want to get specific, I'm from an area close to Doral, which probably okay, yeah. to anyone. No, oh, I, so I, I went to UCF, so I have a bunch of friends from oh, Miami. Yeah. 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 Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So you, you know about the 8th Street vibes then? A little bit. Yeah. Calle Ocho. <laughs> <laughs> Please high five. For those of you listening on audio, Aaron tried to dap me up, but I didn't want you. Um, can, the daft was silent. So you're from Doral. Ish. Uh, I'm from Doral. So you're from Sweetwater. Actually, yeah, that's more like okay. I'm from Sweetwater. Yeah. I'm actually not from Miami. I'm from Broward County. Oh, so, okay, yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like thirty or forty minutes north of like where they lived. And then yeah. Uh I was born in like Sweetwater area, but was raised in Cutler Bay. Cutler Ridge. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice. I have a bunch of friends. Um, oh, God. Now I'm going to forget all of the cities they're from because okay. I'm under pressure. But I know yeah. one of them uh, did go to Marjorie Summit Douglas. Um, okay. That's my elementary. Wait, no, really? I wait, no. Wait. Oh, you do you the, high school. the high school. Yeah, oh, yeah no. Parkland. Parkland, Parkland. That's what it's called. Yeah. I was going for Douglas. And, like, all my friends went to Douglas. But I oh, really? Parkland. When I was, like, my senior year of high school, my parents didn't want to make me change schools. So oh, literally wow. everyone I had went to Douglas, yeah. Man, yeah, my friend went to, he, he graduated, oh God, I'm not going to remember one, because I think he's, he's a couple years older than me, but he's, uh, I think he graduated like 20, 2013. 
anyway, yeah. I was just curious because I feel like um, everyone from Miami, similar to like I say, I'm from DC, is like, uh, we're actually mm -hmm. not from <laughs> that right. city. So, but that's awesome. Okay, now my phone's ringing. This is this is going swell. <laughs> <laughs> I think your friend called me. Um, but yeah, that's awesome. Um, I think that is was such a so cool move, and um, I've never been to Nashville. I'm actually going in a few weeks, which is so exciting. Really? Yeah, I'm going to see uh, the band Camino. Oh, yeah. for their show at the Ryman yeah I'm really excited oh, okay. but um I know that that indie scene alone is just like popping Crazy. off I feel like everybody's either going to Nashville or um Los Angeles I feel like not as many people are like oh New York's New York's the big music move now it's, which is really interesting yeah um but uh so with um the music scenes there obviously Nashville is like profoundly country um it, it's interesting um because you guys are mainly pop punk did you experience experience anything in the scene i know you guys talked about moving there at different times but how was it for the pop punk scene a lot of house shows yeah a, 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 lot, of house shows. a lot of house shows but we played pop punk and like yeah. three years ago we played not that good pop punk <laughs> and like the bands we were playing with were emo bands yeah we didn't we like maybe in the four years that we lived there, or three years that we lived there, played with two pop punk bands. Yeah, it's weird. I feel like we've always kind of been like a little out of place. In Miami, when we were doing pop punk in Miami, I, we were the only band doing pop punk in Miami. There's a couple bands now doing pop punk in Miami that I'm friends with, mm -hmm. but like, we weren't, we were the only pop punk band there, and then we were really the only pop punk band in Nashville. And then we that could, we knew of, we could that we knew of, yeah. yeah. Nashville's a big city. That, but... that we, we that played like in the scene. There was yeah. there's a band called Best Intentions, and then mm -hmm. there's another band that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, rest in peace, Kyle, called Carverton, and those were pretty much the only two that bands. at least we yeah. knew. Yeah, of. that we knew, and we played like a good amount of shows oh, yeah. in the time we were there yeah but it's true we would like hop on shows and it would all be like emo bands yeah and i'm not so. gonna lie i feel like we almost prefer that though like it's it's cool to hop on a lineup and have mm -hmm. some diversity than listen to five pop punk bands in a row so it's definitely not a complaint <laughs> just an observation yeah but yeah for sure yeah but now now that we're gone pop punk's <laughs> becoming like trendy again and now really good new pop punk artists are emerging like john harvey or people in the realm of pop punk like this girl charlotte sands yeah um, yeah so they're great and we really miss an opportunity playing with them since we moved out here yeah but we'll play with them at some point heck yeah, yeah. and something i think there's a lot of things you guys do that i absolutely adore and as like long time oh, yeah. pop punk fan i just really appreciate but i think you guys handing out physical cds i flabbergasted who listens i mean like you know that was very warped tour for me and like you get harassed mm -hmm. by somebody in line like here list like t take my headphones like like listen to me please um okay. and that is so iconic to me and like every time like a lot of rappers in baltimore do that um or used to do that like pre-covid and it was just like people like looked like like what, what, are, what are you guys what are you kids doing there and i just think it's so cool and i i love that you guys are doing that um, can you talk about like how that like came about? Why you guys decided to use that as a source of uh, exposure for the city? Uh, so it's weird. I don't, I feel like we've always taken to wanting to do physical promotion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like we love the talk. TikTok's awesome, but I don't know. There's just something different about like showing up somewhere and passing out CDs or flyers or. Um, I don't know, stickers, anything. We've done it all. Right. In Miami, we, we had a conversation about this recently. In Miami, we would do that all the time um, with very little benefit. It's just hard to get people to care with physical promotion. It's just something we enjoy. It's kind of yeah. sadistic, honestly, because it's painful <laughs> to go up to people and then just have severe rejection after rejection. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I don't know. It's part of the grind. And it was cool. It's, it's proven to be really beneficial and inspiring out here. Because like, we'll hand CDs out to people that we didn't know we're somebody, but everybody's somebody in, out in LA. So yeah. last time we passed out CDs was outside of a Jaden show. And we accidentally gave one to Machine Gun Kelly's bassist, which we ended <laughs> up having a really cool conversation with. And like, yeah, yeah, he was just an awesome guy and like was flabbergasted as well that we were doing physical promotion and shared yeah. a few inspirational words with us. And he was a cool dude. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. 
and yeah. um la oh. alone is like i feel like like you said a great place to do that and um my i've same friend who's from parkland uh moved to la and he's in like uh like digital media and stuff like that but he like the way he talks about it i'm just like do i want to move out there <laughs> just because it's yeah. like i feel like it's such a fostering like creative energy and you know very few cities have that in in different ways in different forms so i like I, it's really awesome that you guys were able to do that and you go to kelly's base it's like heck yeah like you never know where the fuck that's gonna go like right you yeah. know could be on his lap and you guys have started this like i want to say campaign for, to like try and open for mod sun on this upcoming tour yeah. um which is awesome too and i watched that video and I just all of your guys' covers first of all like the covers you guys have done um incredible um and <laughs> of course and um i just the way music is right now in the world especially in the pop punk world i feel like everybody has this like like i don't want to say aura but like this facade and like ever nobody's like funny anymore nobody's really cool anymore nobody is just like yeah fuck yeah we're just like like just a couple of bros everybody is like like dead ass serious and it's it's really refreshing to have like you guys on the scene just like fresh like you guys you guys are happy and like still <laughs> playing pop punk and like yeah, yeah. um so i just like very much like applaud you guys on that and i th it's really funny because when i saw the tiktok that's how i found you guys mm -hmm. um I, I i'm scrolling through my for you page it's all this all this junk all this junk why am i on this for another third hour of the day um, yeah. and i get like the deadbeat tiktok and mm -hmm. immediately i'm like oh sick like new song like let, let's see it and then uh, I see Em's wife and I'm like, why does she look familiar to me? So mm -hmm. I have a mental breakdown of like, why does she look familiar and figured out why, because I was very large internet gal in my teens um, mm -hmm. and remembered who she was, which was very cool. And then I'm like listening and I'm like, what, what? This is such a banger. Oh, um, <laughs> and then I, you know, go through the downfall of like listening to other songs that have been put out and stuff like this. Um, so can you talk about Deadbeat and like where that came from? And I mean, first of all, the lines, fuck my friends, fuck my, fuck the president, like chef's kiss last year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, can we just talk about the inspiration behind that and like where that came from? Yeah, that the inspiration kind of came from, I don't know about everybody, but definitely our life and something that we all struggle with that we still struggle with, like pretty frequently mm. just that i don't know that you know you could be doing something but for some reason you're choosing to do nothing with your life and you really hate it but you're also not going to stop you know um so that's where the idea came from but how it kind of came together was I, I started out with the idea and i dropped out of high school so i have really bad english which means are you there? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I have really bad English. Okay. Yeah. I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't write good lyrics. So then Danny kind of helped me with the lyrics, which is great. And then I called Max one day. I was like, hey, I have this like really promising verse. Like all we had was from it's 2 p.m. I'm still in it till the fuck my friends, fuck the president. And then, <laughs> yeah. And, and then I called Max. I was like, hey – like, what do you think about this? Can you maybe, like, try to write a chorus for this? And he didn't. But he did <laughs> say, hold on. And he, like, took, like, two hours and sent me a little MP3 with the bow, bow, wow, bow, bow, wow. Because that wasn't on the original song. And I personally think that that's, like, a huge part of why that song is so good, in my opinion. Um yeah, and then basically after we had that, we wrote the second verse, but we went weeks of having no chorus at all. I started to call all my friends. I texted them, and I was like, yo, guys, let's come up with something. Nothing we came up with was good until like maybe a couple days before we were supposed to go into the studio. And our producer slash like very close friend Kyle was like, hey, uh, how's it going? And we, I was like, I honestly don't know if I'm going to be able to write a chorus for the song at all. And he's like, let's listen to it. 
And then we did over FaceTime, and the first thing he sang was na 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 na, and he sang he sang you know, you sang it exactly <laughs> he sang it like that, and basically what we did was we took one of the lines or a lot of the lines of the different courses that we all wrote and put them together with Kyle's melody, and then after that it was just like a four hundred degree Fahrenheit knife through freezing cold butter. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> For lukewarm butter. <laughs> yeah. And I just, the I think I have a favorite part of the song. I do really like the song a lot, but my singular favorite part is the crowd chants that you hear. And mm. like I said, like, old pop punk had that a ton. I mean, uh, if you guys know Living Room Song by the Wonder Years, like, that was, like, the first time I heard that song, I was like, this is, like, like, like I want to hear this at a show, and like when I heard the the crowd chants in Deadbeat, I was like, like I'm getting flashbacks to like okay. earlier pop punk, and like I said before, like it's just I feel like you guys just have this like old school energy at a time that a lot of not, like other pop punk bands are going like in a different direction, mm-hmm. um, with like different uh, influences, um, which is great. And uh, there's another part of the song I want to bring up. Um, it's <laughs> reading conspiracy theories. Why did nobody tell me? <laughs> no one ever tell me that Stevie Wonder could see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you know about it's that? Pretty solid. I didn't until this song. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we're all out of time. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like cut the cameras. We gotta go. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you can hear. There's like echoes after that line. Dude, the, yeah. the one that kills me is the the problems really well, 5G. Yeah, there's <laughs> Stevie Wonder can see no one killed Kennedy and the problems really 5G. But Chef's kiss. yeah, it, <laughs> there's this there's this Joe Rogan podcast I with somebody I forgot his name and he was like Stevie Wonder, you know that dude can like 100% see. <laughs> and, and Joe Rogan was like, there's no way that's true. He's like, yeah, like there's videos of him driving cars. <laughs> and if you look like there's people who write reports on it and it's very interesting. And I kind of believe, believe he could see. Um, I will definitely not be going through a Reddit thread after this call <laughs> and exploring this more. Um, it gets need- nuts. I'm I'm here for it, and if you want to add another conspiracy theory in your next song, um, Avril Lavigne is dead is also. That's a big one. I heard about that the other I day. I heard about that. Oh, yeah, I'm already yeah. behind it. <laughs> I believe. <laughs> um, Someone's got to tell Mod. Do, do, no. do you guys know about that? <laughs> no. They, it's yeah. the same conspiracy conspiracy of, with Andrew WK that Yo. and Paul McCartney. Yeah, that they basically he died and got replaced. Well, yeah that they were made as this person. So they have come up with a new Avril Lavigne and her name is like Wendy or something. That's Wendy but, Ravine. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, Yo. But yeah, that's crazy. just for the sake of this, I'm going to say that's true too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm really, I'm really glad we could agree on that. <laughs> um, so like I said, like, this whole song was a chef's kiss from the second I heard it, and um, yeah. I think that's why it's doing well so on TikTok because I think, like personally for me, people like me who are you know mid twenty somethings love pop punk, you know, like into the other things, like they hear that and they're just like, fuck, like this is like, you know, my bread and butter, but like cut it with frozen butter with a, you know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, and then story of a love song is also very good and um the whoa woes in that are so good and it's so wholesome mm. it's just just wholesome fun and i just mm. adore it a lot Thank um you. and of course and you know as we fall into you know the end half of this year and already we've seen so much um rock and roll punk play such a large role in like popular culture um like willow smith mgk is obviously a really big one um how how do you guys feel about this kind of resurgence i mean obviously it's a very positive thing overall but what are your guys' reactions to that as it becomes more mainstream i don't know what i think about it um but i will say i really like a lot of those artists like i really like machine gun kelly Martin. And I really like Mod Sun, and those are two artists that I didn't necessarily love before. Like they each had a few songs that I liked. You also like Kenny Hoopla? Yeah, I love Kenny Hoopla. So I'm about it. 
there are some people that I'm like not necessarily super about like respect like they're doing their thing but like I like a lot of it honestly um yeah some of it's a little bit too edgy for me but um I think there's some yeah. good pop punk and like pop punk-esque stuff coming out right now yeah coming from another mid-20s pop punk emo kid <laughs> I think it's <laughs> Overall, I think I'm I'm stoked that there's like a resurgence in pop punk and pop punk's cool again. I feel like mid 2010s kids wearing the defend pop punk shirts are really losing their mind right now. Yeah. Um, but there's definitely so it's like I feel like we were already doing this when there was a resurgence. So it's like it feels like the perfect time for us. Like we're grinding harder than ever. We're like, oh, people like this again. That's yeah. awesome. We've been doing it. Um, but then there's also the side of like, like Max said, there's some artists that are kind of like riding the wave and like, that's cool. Like you want to ride the wave? It's Buy a fair fortune. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just, that's the grind. I don't know. I, overall, I'm happy about it. Yeah. In, For sure. In my opinion, there are also some artists that are riding the wave and killing it. Yeah. Like if your heart's in it, if you're, if your goal is to make good music, regardless of genre, you're making good music. Yeah. Specs. Did you just say sex? I said that's facts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that sex. I heard something different. Uh. I would really like to hear a uh, Jack Harlow kind of take on, on pop punk, punk rock. Yeah, pop punk, punk rock, something. <laughs> just like with some shredding guitars. I'm very yeah. curious of how it's that like would sound. Oh. We gotta oh, reach out to so Jack. Nice. Yo, games you play featuring Jack Harlow? That I can call him. We were Yeah, let me let me like make a phone call real quick. Jackie. <laughs> Jackie, my boy. <laughs> yeah. Um Yeah, it's really interesting. I mean, I <laughs> let me call it Man Overboard and like get some old shirts, defend pop punk. But um oh, it's so bizarre to me because, you know, my niece is twelve and uh when I was twelve I was very much into one direction, which Still am. Don't get me wrong. I love um, one. <laughs> we all love one. Yeah, we love that. Amazing, and it's just like you have all these like other things you listen to, but like One Direction was very big for me. And now she's like, "Oh, I really like Billie Eilish." I'm like, "That's so fucking edgy for you for a 12 year old." So yeah. I'm like very happy in that regard. Of like all these kids are like actually enjoying it at that age, and not like yeah. me being weird wearing a Pierce the Veil shirt to <laughs> to middle school. No, same. Um, <laughs> Dude, it's interesting that little, like younger kids are getting into music because like I didn't listen to music consciously until probably I was like 14 or something. Like it was just like background noise, and I was just like, okay, this is a song. Yeah. So, but yeah, there are like like young kids on TikTok and like on the internet that just love music, which is pretty cool i think it's awesome and yeah. spe speaking of tiktok what are your guys's favorite tiktoks right now in general oh, dude I other know than I... your own too oh who that dude <laughs> that, the accents we all love that guy the like, accents forget. oh my god there's oh, a guy lucas who... lopez yes that guy <laughs> you he know do... who that is no he does like the most Miami TikToks. He'll oh, just okay. he'll, like a, he'll just like play a character being a cube like, like just any random Cuban guy with an accent in Miami. Yeah. And so he'll just be like, Riggy! Yeah. What's your name? It's Riggy! <laughs> I knew it! That's my boy Riggy! They're so <laughs> funny, dude. Aaron can't do it justice. I can't he's, do it justice. He's literally really one bad. of the funniest people I've ever seen. Shout yeah. out the boy, he do it better than me. Yeah. yeah. There, there's him. <laughs> and I'll name two more. This one's a personal one. There's this kid with a huge ass. <laughs> He's that sounds so fucked. No, that's like <laughs> this kid with a huge No, that I thought you were gonna continue that. after that. I'm like, huge ass what? Okay. Motorcycle? <laughs> it just period. No. <laughs> He's a up. man. He's a full grown man with a huge ass. Yes. And <laughs> dumb he truck. Basically, he basically <laughs> like real. started the trend of is this a video podcast or no? Both, yeah. Okay, so I can show you. Yeah. Um he started the trend with that with Stay by the Kid Leroy. Oh, he, yes! This yes, guy. Oh, wait, no, that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> no, this guy. What? That, so if you if you look, the guy who made the video with the drone of him dancing like that's this. What I, that's what I thought you were talking about. At the beginning of the video, he's reacting to this video. Oh. And I have come to really like this guy. And then I could speak on all of our behalf when I say <laughs> our, probably our favorite TikToker, and he's not big is our friend Boone. Oh, yes. hell yeah. Boone's a beast. He's an amazing artist, but he's also an idiot. 
and he like <laughs> he like makes the funniest and dumbest TikToks I've ever seen. And he just got freaking Black Bear to duet him. Yeah, which was crazy. Black Heck Bear, yeah. made it's so funny, dude. Yeah. He's a beast. Heck Shout out yeah. to Boone. Hashtag plug Boone. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you need to look it up. It's oh, re- we won't even need to plug that guy. No, He's Boone's gonna, videos yeah. hit like. Is that his at Boone? Uh, or, on TikTok, it's why am I verified? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I've seen that name, so it's very possible. <laughs> yeah, he had, he had it really good the other day. His 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 TikToks hit like the best vines hit. Yeah. yeah. Like they're they're fast, and when they when they hit, it's just like the funniest thing in the world you did not expect. Right. I I absolutely love TikToks that give off vine energy because you know you can't. Right. You can't That's what I search for on TikTok. Do you actually? Yeah. yeah. Vine. Vine energy. Oh, okay. Thank you know, look up vine. vine. Energy. Yeah. Just give me peanut butter baby in 2021. That's Yo, what I'm I just showed them that. Oh. <laughs> when the baby. Oh. 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 <laughs> so funny. Um, I've been really into the guy who impersonates principals at a school. Uh, mm. you know what I'm talking about? Wait, no. Is that the same guy that does the frat boy accent or whatever? I don't. I've only watched his ones where he does. The, but he's like, he's got a fake wig on, and like, he's got the keys, and he's like, when 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 high school teachers would like interrupt your, you know, your other. Class, oh, I know what you're talking like, about. It's so funny. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's another guy. I love all, all those impression TikToks. <laughs> I watch this guy that like pretends to be a frat boy, and they're so funny. Is it the same guy who reacts in a frat voice? Is like, yeah. He's like, yeah, and some chocolate there? Yeah. No. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. There's just so the same conversations people. I have with my friends, and they're like, what the yeah. fuck are you talking about? Straight up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you guys want to play a game of quick picks where I make you make a quick pick on a specific scenario, and what song comes to your head at first? Y- yeah, yes. for sure. Should love we you. take tur- should we each answer or should we take turns answering? Love you like a love song, Selena Gomez. <laughs> uh, you, you guys all can answer because I only have three. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, yeah, go first. Okay. So Dude, I already I- picked mine because I'm very uh, indecisive and I would have a very hard time doing this on the spot. Um, cool. But the first one is you're teleported back to 1920. What song are you going to show them? I picked WAP. Yo, Yo. that's what I'm going to say. So... <laughs> Let's skip it. Uh, what's oh. that Megan St- the Stallion song that we always play uh, in the car? Girls in the Hood. Girls in the Hood. <laughs> okay, yeah. incredible choice. That's yeah. a oh yeah, she's amazing. Yeah, facts. Yeah. Are we all answering that one? Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. yeah we're all answering. <laughs> um, Unless that's the collective. I don't know answer. the name of it, but it's that song that's like. They had that song in the twenties. Yeah, I would just be like, yo, I rock with this too. <laughs> <laughs> he just walks up to a bar, he's like, let's play this shit. Yeah, no, for, and in the 20s, that's like late. Like, wasn't like that, like... Dude, that's like the 1800s and shit, is it not? Yeah, it is. So I'm saying that music was like way old. So if I pull up to the club in the 20s and I'm like... <laughs> like, everyone's going to come crazy. They're going to be like, yo, who put the 100-year-old in the club? <laughs> yeah, for real. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> And then I, if can we bring the music video since we're since we're coming from the future? You're gonna blow their minds anyway, so yeah. Oh, I know you're gonna Montero. Oh no, 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 industry baby. Industry yeah. baby. Yeah. Uh, that first the song is amazing and it's probably my favorite music video. And like I like really focus on music videos and admire artists that go all out. Like industry baby's legit and they it's hilarious. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I- I'm, I'm in the same boat. Like, if somebody, like, when I look up artists, I, number one, listen to the song. If I dig the song, I'll go to find the music video. And if it's an incredible music video, just, like, chef's kiss of a, of a visuals, mm-hmm. um, I'm just, like, sold from the get-go. I'm just like, yeah. yes, take my money. Um, so number two is you're trapped in an elevator and someone's ringtone goes off. And it won't stop ringing. And it's the song that would be your personal hell. Um, I picked uh, Happy by Pharrell. Really? Oh wait, is that? Oh, if you feel like you're oh, is that what that yeah. is? Yeah. We oh. have very similar tastes. Really? If, if oh, that, if that was Narvi. you said it would be hell in the elevator. <laughs> the personal hell for it to just play on the loop until you get out. Dang, I was really excited to 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 answer the song that I would want to listen to if I was stuck in an elevator. Can I answer that instead? Go for it. 
Aaron, you have to answer hell. But mine is the same as hers. Okay, this is mine. Happy. I hate happy. Mine is. <laughs> I'm can't sorry. Stop. Hot chili peppers. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I can't stop. California. Um. <laughs> personally, mine is. Any. Oh, no, no, no. I like the Arctic Monkeys now. <laughs> uh, Max. No shade. It's probably XXX Temptation or whatever, however you pronounce. Oh yeah. Uh, Max loves him, but he he has like this song that I really don't like. That's called "Bitch Are You Up." <laughs> I don't know what it is. Up like an in, in, insomniac. But not a fan of him. I just remembered. I have a way better answer now. Yeah. Money Machine by a hundred Gex. Fuck you, dog. Uh, dude, no fire. Is, I love that song. Can you imagine listening to that song on repeat? Yeah, on do it and over again. <laughs> stupid. Oh my god, dude, that song's fire. But shout out 100 Gex if you want to work with us. <laughs> shout out 100 Gex, but you know the fuck I heard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the last, the last one is: you are on the way home from a terrible date. Everything you could ever imagine goes bad. I don't know. You maybe spill the drink. You, so everything just goes to shit. And you, you drive the person to home. What Let song me... are you playing to cut the silence? I'm Let... going with uh, Brutal by Olivia Rodrigo. Okay, that that's a great one. But I'm going to start with the one I opened this podcast with. Who says, who says you're not perfect? Who says, who says you're not worth it? Who says you're not beautiful? Who says you're the only one that's hurting? Um, I who have... says by Selena Gomez what? is one of the best songs written of all time? <laughs> I have a banger of a song. What? Have you seen Toy Story? Yes. You know that song, When She Loved Me? Oh. When She Loved Me. It's like, me. oh, fuck. How does it go? What's the What's the girl's name from Toy Story? The cowgirl? Jessie. Yeah, and it's like in her scene when she's all alone, it's like, Everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything. Yo, so you're going sad. I would literally cry. That song is so sad. But you'd, you'd make the other person cry, probably. Honestly. <laughs> Just, like, sobbing on the way home. This what Jane yeah. so bad. <laughs> Literally. Either that or Fireball. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Fireball. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah. A very Miami I, answer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to throw in an oldie. It Ends Tonight by All American Rejects. <laughs> Aaron loves that song. Me. Yeah. <laughs> All American Regions wow. was one of like the first bands I got super obsessed with as a kid. So I have one final question for you guys. Musicians <laughs> have the ability and the platforms to leave a mark on the world in various ways, either bigger or smaller. What type of mark do you guys want to make as a band? Oh. Don't be afraid to be this this sounds really dumb, but just be yourself and don't try to be cooler than you are, you know, because you're cool the way you are. And if you try to be cooler than the way you are, you actually just turn out to be lamer than how cool you actually are. You know what I'm saying? Oh, be be with your friends. Do as stupid of stuff as you want to do. And I don't know. Just have fun. Yeah. That's like what I think we all think of this friendship in this band. Yeah. To To the point of what you were saying earlier, like – where the pop punk scene's coming back up, but everyone, like, is trying to be, like, overly cool and there's not as much personality behind it. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's kind of, like... I don't know. We've intentionally made it a purpose to be, like, we're going to be ourselves because we can only ever get away with being ourselves. It would be so inauthentic. I mean, it's fake. Fuck. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. We're just a group of boys being boys. It's yeah. Fact. And we couldn't that's pretend simple. to be anything else. <laughs> Have fun with your friends and be you. Yeah. Heck yeah. Well, I beautifully said, um, and thank you guys so much for doing this. Um, I am very excited to hear more and more from you guys. Like I said, chef's kiss for all the songs. Um, and thank you guys for coming on today. So games we play, thank you. Thank yeah. you so much for having us. Yeah. Thank so you, fun. Ali.